celebrated his life yesterday in outstanding fashion because he was an outstanding man. He was saved by grace, called to be a saint by God Almighty. And I know that David's family is appreciative of the choir members who showed up and the minister of music and all of our leaders and ushers and others who came to be a blessing. And we can never forget the culinary arts ministry because that fellowship we have around food does a lot to help us to heal. So God bless you for that. Also, I understand we have some special guests of Deacon Al Evans here from Virginia. Where are you? Just, just raise your hand. Where are you? Are? Where are we? Come on, let's give God some glory. I'm so full from what the Lord has already done. Y'all know I'm already done. So y'all say amen a few times and we'll give the benediction because I, I don't know. <laughs> Open your Bibles, if you will, to 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, beginning with verse 27. We're going to walk through some verses here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. For the sake of time, let's start at 27. If you have it, say amen. amen. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, Governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret. Verse number 31. But covet or desire earnestly the best gifts. And yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Lord, we bless your name today. Lord, we need to hear from heaven. Bless us with the word. Save somebody, Lord Jesus. Deliver somebody, Lord Jesus. Strengthen somebody for the journey. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And make this moment possible. We just ask that you have your way. This is your house. We're your children. You died for us, and we say thank you. And God show us how to have life and how to have it in full measure. We thank you. In the precious and holy name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. This year, we kick this year off with the theme, New Beginnings, Time of Restoration and a time of advancement. In February, when we celebrate love and black history, we want to kick off the theme, it's all about love. When you really think about it, even our theme, a time of new beginnings, a time of restoration, a time for advancement, at the end of the day, if we want to advance, what God is saying to us through this theme is that it is all about love. In this particular text, chapter number 12 in 1 Corinthians, of verse number 31, the latter part that uh, Paul declares, Yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Sermon number one is, which way do I go? How I many of you are thinking about that even? Which way do I go? I, I came to declare that somebody is thinking about which way do I go in a particular relationship? Or which way do I go in my job? Which way do I go with God even in His church? Uh, this question underscores what's in the minds and in the hearts of many of us today. In essence, it's saying really, how do I fit in in the different situations where I find myself in life. What should I do? How should I handle life's challenges? Uh, which way do I go? 
or how should I behave even in the body of Christ. In other words, what really is true Christianity? What is, true, what is wisdom? And what is the right thing for me to do based on what I am facing today? Which way do I go? All of us have challenges in our life. All of us have situations that we're trying to figure out. And I want you to know today it's all about love. The background to this particular uh, book is that the church at Corinth is having problems. Sometimes we don't like to call them problems, but sometimes they're just problems. Uh, we like to refer to them as opportunities. Yes, they're opportunities, but, but in essence, you've got to understand that they're challenges and they are growing pains. Uh, and if you want to grow, if you want to advance, you're going to have to deal with some growing pains. Some of the main problems, just to name a few, that the church was facing is this. They were refusing sanctification. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't uh, uh, be a child of God and still hang out in the same crowd. Uh, you can't say, for God I live and, and for God I die and head right back to the ball. Yeah. And to the club. You can't say, I love the Lord with all and you hang around with folks who are cursing and fussing. <laughs> cursing the God that we love. I know you can't do it, but you can't refuse sanctification and expect to grow and be all God wants you to be. The Bible says you got to come out from among them. you got to be separate from the world. You can't have it both ways. It's impossible. To straddle the fence. Yes, to have one foot with God and one foot in the world, know the devil got both of your feet. Yes. You got to be all in for God. God said, You're for me or you're against me. Yes. I got some brothers who still don't always talk right. But they know how I feel about it. I, I'm not going to talk like they talk just because they continue to talk that way. Remember when I first got saved, I had a friend, my closest friend. I, uh, we did all kinds of things. Yes, yes, yes. He's the first one I learned how to smoke with. Uh, we got some cool. Uh, I knew my dad would just knock me down if he knew I had him. And, and Bernard and I, we went out in the woods and we, we didn't even know what we were doing. We were trying to figure out how to smoke. We dug a hole and we, we put them in plastic and we hid them next to a tree where we could come back and smoke again the next day. <laughs> this fool went in the house after smoking, didn't realize I'm gonna smell like smoke. <laughs> My mama looking at me funny, I'm like, what's wrong with you? Man? She said, you been smoking? I'm like, how did she know? I'm telling you, Bernard was my best friend. But he wasn't serving the Lord when I got ready to serve the Lord. And I still wanted to spend time with him, so i go by his house, but they'd have conversations that would remind me of how we used to be. You see, once you commit your life to God, your old friends, they're going to think you're the same person. You're going to have to show them that you changed. So they were resisting sanctification. you you got to embrace sanctification. They were fighting among themselves. There was division in the church. Oh, y'all quiet, man. There were cliques in the church. Some said, I'm with this person. I'm with that person. I, I got to line up. Somebody please tell me who got the most power so I can line up with them. There was division in the church at Corinth. You see, uh, uh, when you don't recognize that it's all about love, when love is absent from the situation, these things happen. There was sexual sin of all kinds. Lawsuits between Christians resisting the truth. Y'all know anybody who resists the truth? They know the truth, they just won't do it. They resist it. They, they, they spend a, a all night trying to twist word into a, what they want it to be rather than accepting the word for what it is. Conflicts about Christian liberties, about or what we can and cannot do. Marriage was on the rocks. 
they could even agree on public worship and they even had problems with the Lord's Supper. Wow. Chapter 12 highlights some of the struggles with the early church about which way to go in terms of how do I fit in or what is true Christianity? Well, what, what, what does truth really look like? What does wisdom look like played out in the church? Yeah. Now i got to pause here and say to some of you that the prerequisite for maximum benefit with this sermon is salvation. Okay. See, if you don't know God, if you don't have uh, the Holy Spirit alive and well in your heart and in your mind, or you won't understand what I'm saying. Yeah. First Corinthians Chapter number 2, verses 14 and 15 uh, lets us know that the common man uh, can't comprehend uh, spiritual things. Because if we're common, we don't understand what God has said to us. But the good news is that uh, if you want to understand, all you got to say right now and mean it from your heart is, Oh Lord Jesus, save me. Yeah. If you mean it, the, the Holy Spirit will be regenerated in your heart, in your mind, in your soul. And God will begin to uh, speak to you spirit to spirit. See, what was going on here in this church is, is what today's church is fighting too, is that uh, there was a fight between carnal Christians and spirit-filled Christians. Still going on today. Still going on today because uh, there's some who will resist to be sanctified. There's some that will resist to fully embrace of the Holy Spirit and God Almighty and be spirit filled and led yes, yes. because they won't yes. all they know is carnality yeah. Lord have mercy I, I, I hear Pastor Caldwell even that I heard him say one time he said you can't take non-Christians yes. to solve Christian problems right. uh, if I'm spirit filled and you're carnal oh, we don't have a conflict you see, when you go to Galatians chapter number 5, it's real clear here in verse number 16 uh, what Paul is uh, teaching. He said, this I say then, a walk in the Spirit. In other words, walk in love, and, and ye shall not fulfill the lust yeah. of the flesh. Yes. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit. Right. How many of you know that's right? Yeah. I, I know I got the Holy Ghost, but I tell you, uh, uh, my flesh and my Spirit, they're constantly in a war. <laughs> And the spirit against the flesh. And, and these are contrary. The one to the other. So that you cannot do the things that you would. Don't you know sometimes. Uh, you know the right thing to do. You want to do it. But it seems like uh, you just can't do it. Verse 18 says. But if you're led of the spirit. You're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. There, uh, there are many. He names a few. He says, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, that's just belonging to do evil, idolatry, or witchcraft, oh, stubbornness, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresies, oh, envy. Lord have mercy. Somebody say, Lord have mercy. Murder. I said, I didn't murder somebody. Well, maybe you didn't with the gun, but what about your tongue? <laughs> Folks get murdered every day in the church. Come on, come on. Every Sunday, somebody's just waiting. Come on. Sometimes they can't even wait until the benediction is over. They got, they got a text and send a bomb to kill somebody. If I'm telling the truth, somebody say amen. Amen. understand how people can just be rowdy in God's house. We shouldn't. When we leave God's house, I can kind of understand that you get in certain situations. Somebody's playing the beat. You're not playing the beat and stuff goes on and the voting on uh, You can't rowdy, but in God's house? You don't have the audacity to walk up in God's house. Be rowdy. Somebody said, Lord, have mercy. He said, these things you, you used to do, you don't do them anymore. But notice what he says in verse 21. I, I, I can't omit this because there it is right there in the Word. It said, uh, they which do such things shall not inherit 
the kingdom of God. Come in here, raise and saying, if you want to, thank you, going to heaven. Yes, May all the you want to, thank you, still going to heaven. The Bible says, don't you do these things. Yes, Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's why I'm so quick to repent. Yes. That's why you ought to be quick to repent and get it right with God. Amen. Because God is not a liar. He's not going to say one thing and do something else. If he said you're not going to inherit the kingdom, you're not going to inherit. Right. Ain't no need to beg him. You ain't got to beg him. Just repent. That's what he said. Ask for forgiveness and everything will be all right. Oh, yeah. You see, there was a war going on between the carnal Christian uh -huh. and spirit-filled Christians. Uh -huh. You can be saved and on your way to heaven uh -huh. and creating all kind of hell in God's house. Yes. Somebody say amen. Hey, amen. That's another type of day, but God's trying to help us. 